Hello everyone, it's Annie and today I am doing a very large book haul. <laughs> I haven't done a book haul since the spring, so I have quite a lot to show you today. <laughs> um, so let's go first with my book of the month pick, which is Bronze Drum. And this is something I am so excited for. This was already on my radar before book of the month announced it as a pick for this month, but I am so, so glad that this is a pick because it's something so unique that I've never seen before. This is a story about two sisters in ancient Vietnam who basically create an uprising. They train all of these women to fight against the invading Han Chinese. And this is based on a true story as well. So this is historical fiction that is based on truth. And I have never read anything about ancient Vietnam. I've never learned anything about ancient Vietnam. And this just sounds right up my alley, very feminist as well. So I am super excited to read this one. Okay, so now for the books that I bought secondhand at like Pango Books, Depop, or secondhand bookstores. So first we have This Poison Heart by Kaylin Bayron. And this is the, I think, Illumicrate or Fairy Loot edition. Um, anyway, yeah, we have this and it's signed and it is a special cover edition. I loved this book so much. I gave this five stars. It is my most favorite book I read in June for Pride Month. This is just an amazing story about the main character, Brie, who has this special power where she can create plants, like make plants grow ju just with her mind. Like she's like a magical girl. And then she one day has someone come and say, hey, your birth mom, she's adopted, your birth mom left you this estate in upstate New York and it's all yours. And she goes there and she starts to learn more about her birth family and about her magical powers and what that all means. And it's just so good. Sapphic, one of the best books I've read this year for sure. It is so good and I'm so glad to own this beautiful copy. And then speaking of special editions, I found the Fairy Loot edition signed of Blood Zion and I was so excited. I got this for like $2 in a secondhand bookstore. It is beautiful. I am obsessed with this cover. So gorgeous. This is a fantasy book about a girl who is one of the daughters of an Orisha god. Um, she is a called a scion. And under the brutal rule of the Lucas or Lucis, uh, her identity as that a scion means death. So she has hidden her abilities, but she was then conscripted into the army on her 15th birthday. So she has to try and conceal her powers while trying to infiltrate this evil overlord army. Um, but while doing that, maybe she loses herself within that. Um, I'm getting some Baruch Hormrond vibes, if you guys know that. That's one of my favorite books of all time. I'm just super excited for this. I have seen some people talking about this and really, really loving it, so I can't wait to start. And then the last book I got secondhand from the same store actually is A Song of Wraiths and Rune, and I really don't know much about this except that it is a fantasy. Um, I believe this is also young adult, uh, and I've heard people say wonderful things about it, like they really love this. Um, I don't know much about it. It is about Malik, and the Solstasia Festival is a chance to escape his war-stricken home and start a new life with his sisters in the prosperous desert city of Ziran. But when a vengeful spirit abducts Malik's younger sister as payment to enter the city, Malik strikes a fatal deal kill the crown princess of Ziran in exchange for Nadia's freedom. Very interesting. Um, yeah, I mean, this this has gotten a lot of hype. I've seen people talk about it a lot on booktube. And ooh, look how it catches the light. That's beautiful. <laughs> yeah, so when I saw this on the shelf, I just had to pick it up. Okay, so now we're going to talk about books that I got for free, whether I won them from giveaways or the publisher sent them to me. So first I won the second Rebel uh, from a Goodreads giveaway, actually. Yes, people do actually win those. Um, <laughs> this is my first time winning one, very exciting. Um, even though I have not read The First Sister, which is the first book of this trilogy, I entered this giveaway on a whim and I won it, so no, I really have to read that book. <laughs> um, but this 
is a really highly anticipated space opera for me, a queer space opera. Um, and it has three different POVs and it seems very complex and like has a lot of political intrigue. Um, this is the sequel, so I don't really know much about this, but it seems like each book in the trilogy it focuses more heavily on one of the three main characters. So I'm very excited to read this, especially before the third book in the trilogy comes out later this year. And The Wanderers I got from a little free library. I saw this, picked it up because it was very galaxy-like on the cover, and I was like, oh, sci-fi, okay, I'm gonna grab it. Um, it doesn't have that great a rating on Goodreads. I don't really know much about it. I had heard of it before, so I just grabbed it. Um, I think it's more like a possible future sci-fi instead of like kind of out there sci-fi, if you get what I'm saying. Um, this is about how in four years, Prime Space will put the first humans on Mars. Three astronauts must prove that they're the crew for the job by spending 17 months in the most realistic simulation ever created. But the complications of inner space may prove no less fraught than those of outer space, as the line between what is real and unreal begins to blur, and key relationships with the people East astronaut has left behind, daughter, wife, and son, hang in the balance. So yeah, I'm not sure if this is like extremely my thing, but it was from a little free library and it is actually an arc. Um, so if I don't like it, I'll just give it back. Next is H is for Hawk, which is a nature writing slash grief memoir that I got actually from my job. My library was going through their collection. They had two copies of this. So I got to take one home, <laughs> perks of being a librarian. Um, I was so excited because I have heard Olive from A Book Olive rave about this book. This is one of her favorite books of all time. So when I got the chance to snag a copy, I knew I couldn't pass it up. And this is about a woman named Helen whose father dies suddenly. Um, and she is an experienced falconer, but apparently there is a very deadly species of falcon called the goshawk or goshawk i don't know how to pronounce it um and she kind of sees herself in her grief mirrored in this animal so she adopts one and raises it and i am very very excited to read about her experiences and then i won blood trials in a giveaway i am so excited about this i have been really anticipating this book this is kind of like a blend between science fiction and fantasy so that's really exciting and the cover is just gorgeous this is the uk version um i really like this cover because of the contrast between the blue and the red i just i love it um <laughs> so here's what it says blood spilled long ago between the republic of marine and the armies of the blood emperor now there is peace in the republic where blood magic is banned but there is also a strict class system her world is not perfect, but Ikena survived in it until now. With the murder of her grandfather, Ikena spirals out of control. She has a secret only her grandfather knew. She possesses the blood magic of the Republic's enemies. She throws herself into the gladiatorial get war games at the heart of her martial world. Trials that will lead her closer to her grandfather's killers. Ooh. That is so interesting. I'm, I'm so excited to read this one. Definitely highly anticipated read. Okay, and now three books that were sent to me by the publisher. <laughs> um, first, we have a book that I got to read, which is Valiant Ladies by Melissa Gray. I talk about this in my July wrap-up. Um, this is a historical mystery sapphic book about two girls in colonial Peru. Um, who at night kind of become these sword-wielding vigilantes and they go around and try and solve this murder mystery that has been going on in their city. Um, there seems to be a serial killer on the loose and there's a lot of politics involved, colonial politics and class discrimination and very, very interesting things going on. I have not seen many people talk about this book and I don't know why. I mean, even just from the cover, like, sword lesbians like okay like it it was so good it was a five star book this is YA I just loved it I loved it so much and if you want to hear more about it definitely check out my wrap up and then also sent to me was just your local bisexual disaster great cover great title um I have not gotten around to read this yet 
but it's basically just a YA contemporary about a girl who is kind of coming into her identity and finding herself. Um, I don't really know much else about it, uh, again, because I didn't uh, ask for it. Um, oh, it has this little... <laughs> Very cute. So it says, growing up in Texas's Rio Grande Valley, Maggie has always been a little messy, but she's okay with that. She has a great family, a great group of friends, a rocky romantic history, and dreams of being a music photographer. Tasked with picking an escort for her little sister's quinceanera, though, Maggie has to face the truth. Her feelings about her friends and her future aren't as simple as she'd once believed. Yeah, so your classic Y contemporary. It seems very cute, so I, I'm very excited to read this. And then we have When You Call My Name, which is a book I had not heard about until it showed up in my mailbox. Um, this is about two boys in 1990 in New York City. The film fanatic Adam is 17 and being asked out on his first date. Heart racing, Adam accepts, quickly falling in love with Callum like the movies always promised. Fashion-obsessed Ben is 18 and has just left his home upstate after his mother discovered his hidden stash of gay magazines. But in New York City, Ben's sexuality begins to feel less like a secret and more like a badge of honor. Then Callum disappears, leaving Adam heartbroken, and Ben finds out his new world is more close-minded than he thought. Interesting. Um, I'm not going to read any more of that because I feel like it kind of goes into spoiler territory. Um, I, yeah, I'm not sure I would have picked this up if it was up to me, but since it is sent to me and I have it, I'm definitely interested in reading this. I have seen people give this really high ratings, so I'm going to give this a try. Okay, so lastly, we have books that I bought at Barnes & Noble. <laughs> um, first, we have Zachary Ying uh, and The Dragon Emperor, which is Siran J. Zhao's middle grade debut. And this was amazing. Five star read, hands down. So good. Yu-Gi-Oh! slash Chinese Percy Jackson. I have a whole video talking about this book, I believe, um, or I did it in my trans day of visibility video. I can't remember, but I'll link it up above. Um, this is so funny, but also deals with really heavy issues very well. Um, the main character is a Hui Muslim boy, so it deals with that discrimination in Chinese society really well, as well as the immigrant experience being a Chinese American boy in a rural town in Maine, US. So it was very, very interesting. Really great humor, I think. <laughs> Shidan's humor works really well for middle grade, and I can't wait to read the sequel to this. It was so much fun. And another middle grade that was honestly a cover buy, <laughs> we have Nora and the Immortal Palace, which is very much uh, reminiscent of Spirited Away. I just read this last month, and it was so cute and heartwarming. Um, it also deals with very difficult topics such as child labor and greed and things like that that are just big problems in our society. Um, and the main character, Nura, is very nice to follow. Um, her growth and her, you know, realizing what is important and what is not. So she is a child laborer. She works in mica mines and one day the mines collapse and she is transported to the world of the djinn, where, like Spirited Away, she has to, she is kind of forced to work there um, and pay off a debt that she was like tricked into. And it was so good, um, really good. I love Nura's relationship with her family and it was just so cute. I, I really highly recommend this. And then we have two Becky Chambers books. First, I pre-ordered The Prayer for the Crown Shy, which is the second installment of the Monk and Robot novellas. I loved this book. This was the favorite book that I read last month. It was so, so good. Just a wonderful continuation. Um, you do need to read the first book in the series, which is Song for a Wild Built. It's about this non-binary monk who goes around and sells tea, but they are dissatisfied with their life, so they go into the forest and they run into this robot named Mosscap, and it is the epitome of cozy sci-fi, very solar punk, and it is just one of my favorite things in the whole entire world. And then... I decided I wanted to own a copy of this gorgeous book, To Be Taught If Fortunate, which is another one of Becky Chambers' novellas, and I just am in love with this bright orange cover. I love it so much. <laughs> um, this is a 
sci-fi that has a really great queer rep. Um, it is about how in the future, instead of terraforming planets to sustain human life, explorers of the galaxy transform themselves. Yes. So scientists have made a breakthrough during the turn of the 22nd century in human spaceflight. Through a revolutionary method known as soma forming, astronauts can survive in hostile environments off of Earth using synthetic biological supplementations. With the fragile body no longer a limiting factor, human beings are at last able to explore exoplanets long suspected to harbor life. Yes. Um, I love the crew. This Becky Chambers is just a master at found family. There is polyamorous uh, rep in this book as well. And oh, it's just so good. And I kind of want to read it again. <laughs> and then we have a big hefty book, which is The Final Strife, which I pre-ordered from Barnes Noble. And it was definitely worth it. This is a sapphic epic fantasy. It's the beginning of a new trilogy. Basically, it's very complicated to explain, but basically this world deals with three different colors of blood. There is clear or invisible blood, which are basically the slaves of the world, and then there is blue blood, which is kind of the middle class, but they're mistreated, and then the red bloods are like the high class rulers of the society. And I love this so much. Definitely five stars. We follow a very unique main character who is a drug addict and she kind of has missed her calling as the chosen one and you get to see her feelings about that. She is just such a beautifully unique, very complex character. She read like a real person. You can really feel the care and love that Sara El Arifi put into her world building and all of these characters. I just loved it so much and there was a really good twist at the end so I cannot wait to read the second one. Speaking of second ones, we have God Slayers which is the final installment of the Gear Breakers duology. I just love this cover so much, the colors, very beautiful. Um, yeah, I, I really enjoyed this. Um, it basically picks up exactly where Gear Breakers left off so you do need to read the first one to enjoy this one but i just love the ending and the found family in this as well it's just so exciting and honestly this duology is something i would love to see adapted someday into a movie or a tv series i would just love it i mean it has lesbians and giant robots so <laughs> i don't know what else you want so then another book I pre-ordered is The Dawn of Young Chen by F.C. Yi. Um, I got the Barnes & Noble exclusive edition, which has, I think, a extra short story or an extra chapter or something. Um, I am so excited to read this. F.C. Yi was the author of the two Kiyoshi novels about Avatar Kiyoshi, which I loved so much. And I don't know anything about this avatar, but obviously she is an air nomad. And I am so excited to see what FCE has come up with about this character. And I'm so excited for more avatar content because I am desperate for it. I need those new movies that are coming out. I need those new comics that have been uh, talked about, about Azula and everybody. I, I just, I need that and I need more avatar. So I am so excited to read this. I had to pre-order it. And FCU did an amazing job kind of giving us more world building about the Fire Nation in the Kyoshi novels. So since this one is set in the Air Nomads, I am really hoping that we get more about uh, the Air Society and their world building as well. So I'm really excited. Okay, two more. <laughs> we have Bluebird, which I've already read. I gave it 4.5 or 5 stars. I really liked this. This is a really fun space adventure. It is a sci-fi about a gunslinging lesbian, her librarian girlfriend, <laughs> and this mysterious girl named Ginka. And I just loved every second of this. This was a really well-developed and well-woven together story. It has two timelines that come together at the end. And it was just so interesting. The world building was really interesting. Um, there are three factions in space and the main character is like a person that isn't belonged to any of those three factions, which is like really weird in this book. And she's very distrustful of them and nobody trusts her because she's kind of like a rogue. And it's just such a great story. Um, basically, the main character's sister was kidnapped by one of these factions and she has something that the factions want in return for her sister's safe return, um, but she's not gonna give that away. 
but so she goes and tries to get her sister back with the help of this girl named Ginka who she meets randomly. Um, it's just really good. I, I love it and I'm very interested to see what else Sierra Pierlot comes up with. And lastly, another sci-fi space opera, we have Bonds of Brass, which is a male-male romance in sci-fi in space. Um, I think that this gives me very big Winter's Orbit vibes, so I'm very excited about this. I've also heard that it is kind of a adaptation of the author's um, Poe and Finn fanfic from Star Wars, which I am definitely here for. Um, it's very short and it is about this boy named Etienne whose life was shattered when the merciless Umber Empire invaded his world. He spent seven years putting himself back together under its rule, joining an Umber military academy, and becoming the best pilot in his class. Even better, he's met Gal, his exasperating and infuriatingly enticing roommate. But when their classmates spring an assassination plot on Gal, a devastating secret comes to life. Gal is the heir to the Umber Empire. Ooh, so, you know, Etienne has to make a choice. Does he save his friend? Or, you know, it, I, it, it's just exciting. Yeah, I, I, I really want to read this. I tried to read it in July, but I just wasn't in the mood and I want to give this, you know, the time and effort it deserves because it does seem like something I would really be into. So I'm going to pick this back up at a later date, but I am very excited. And this is a trilogy. I believe the third book just came out. So yes, I am very excited to read this. And that is my book haul today. Thank you all so much for watching. Um, I really hope you enjoyed. Let me know down below if you've gotten any some exciting books like special editions or anything like that down below. Um, or if you read any of these books and you want to give me your opinion, I'd really appreciate that as well. So if you like this video, please like and subscribe to my channel and I'll see you next time. Bye!